Now, parades for martyrs and chants of destroying Israel for the glory of Palestine are something Israelis are very used to hearing, unfortunately, especially when the news is covering some sort of summer camp or school being run in the West Bank or Gaza. But when you hear about a terror training summer camp held in northern Israel and sponsored by an Israeli political party, many more heads are bound to turn. Well, here to talk about the Balad Party's new summer youth camp is founder and executive director of the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies, Dr. Martin Sherman. Thank you very much for coming in, doctor. Thank you for inviting me. All right, so first off, we're going to get right into it. The Balad Party members and spokespeople are insisting that they are protected by free speech in this endeavor at this camp, but it sounds like fairly clear incitement. You know, what will or should Israel's response be to this? Well, I certainly must agree with you. This is certainly beyond the, bond, the bounds of free speech and is uh, clearly incitement. Can you imagine what would happen if some right-wing organization were to uh, conduct themselves in the same way? There'd be a huge outcry. And I have no doubt that this is well within the realm of incitement and the Israeli government should take firm action to respond to it. Will we see any arrests in the Balad party, do you think? Well, you know, I think the fact that this has been allowed to go on for so long over the years reflects a complete collapse of political resolve on the part of the Israeli authorities. I certainly hope that there will be arrests because basically it's incitement to violence. And uh, as I said, I think anyone on the right wing conducting themselves in a far more or far less extreme uh, manner would have found himself in trouble with the law. Now, something that I found interesting is that the Balad Party has also claimed that the activities and ideologies taught at this camp are in line with their party narrative and movement, but their party movement, as expressed by them, stands to destroy the Jewish identity of Israel while lifting and supporting the Palestinian national identity instead. So, at what point can somebody legitimately argue that this is even borderline treason? Well, I, I think they're across the border by quite a fair margin, and I think it's unacceptable that the Israeli authorities allow this to continue because it really goes down to the essence of what the nation is in Israel. And you cannot have, on the one hand, a portion of the nation which is trying to promote a Jewish nation state, and another portion of the so-called nation, or so-called portion of the same nation, trying to destroy the Jewish uh, nation state. It just uh, can't carry on. If this is allowed to develop and isn't put a stop to, I think we could easily see a, a, a Lebanese scenario in Israeli society. I mean, that being said, you know, if I played the devil's advocate, I could say, you know, it is a summer camp, and yes, they do military drills, but there are Jews who do military drills in the army. And, but and not to destroy the, the Jewish state. I mean, the, the, the founding principle of Israel is that it is a Jewish state. Now, if you're going to have organizations that challenge that, then they're challenging the very founding principles of the state. And I think that qualifies as sedition and treason. And I think that the, the full force of the law should be brought to bear against them. Now, okay, so uh, again, I'm, I'm going to play some devil's advocate. Is If you have, one of their arguments is, again, you know, I mentioned to, to take away the Jewish identity of, the, of, the, of Israel. Um, but that's not something that only Arab parties are arguing. So is that, is that so beyond the pale? Well, if you think that Israel should be the nation state of the Jewish people, and that was the whole rationale for, finding it, for founding it, and if you read the Declaration of Independence, yes, that's unacceptable. I, I think it's, uh, it's, un it's unacceptable, and if the Jews want to maintain their nation state and their, their national independence, they'll have to deal with that quite robustly. All right, now, uh, how many Israeli Arabs do you actually think buy into this ideology? Because when you look at Balad's popularity, out of 120 Knesset seats, they only have three. Well, that's a bit uh, uh, misleading, because they're part of the joint list, which is uh, 13 uh, members, of the, I think the third lar largest list in the, the Knesset, and all the components of the uh, joint list are vehemently anti-Zionist and do not accept the Jewish nature of the state. So I think that if you're lenient with one of their more extreme elements, the others will follow suit. And I think this is a dangerous precedent, and I think tolerance and lenience here will produce a very unfortunate result in the not-too-distant future. All right, so I, I have uh, just a few moments left. Uh, so real quick, I, I wanted to ask you, this is the 18th year that this camp has been running. I risked my case. So <laughs> do you think that there have been any attacks performed by Israeli Arabs like what happened at the Temple Mount that might be connected to camps like this? Well, I don't know for sure, but I certainly wouldn't be astounded to find out that there were. All right. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Dr. Chairman, thank you so much for coming in Thank today. you.